53. According to this equation, how many moles of magnesium would be required to react with one mole of B2O3? So the first thing we're going to want to check is to see if these are balanced. And we can see right away we've got three oxygens on the left, one on the right. So that clearly isn't balanced. So to balance, we'll add a three here. Uh, now we need to add a three to the magnesium so that we have three magnesiums on both sides. I've got two borons on the left, so I'm going to need a two to the boron on the right. And so now I'm balanced. How many magnesiums are going to react with one mole of B2O3? Well, I can see it's a one to three ratio. For every one mole of B2O3, I need three moles of magnesium. And so that's why the answer to 53 is E. In this solid, what are the ions? So we just know that these break into the polyatomic ions of ammonium, NH4+, plus, and nitrate, NO3-. minus. So know your polyatomics. And so 54 is A. Which are good laboratory practices? Well, which one is not a good laboratory practice? So four of these are going to be good practices. One is not. So let's see. Wait for a hot object to cool before weighing it. Yes, uh, mostly to avoid damaging the balance. But yep, you want to make sure it's cool before you, you weigh it. So we get rid of A. Rinse a burette with the solution that will be used to fill the burette. Yeah, if you want to rinse out a burette, clean it out, or at least kind of rinse out what you had previously been, been measuring, uh, you want to rinse it out not just with water, because the leftover water can affect what you eventually put in it, but you want to actually use the solution that you're going to be using to rinse it, because then if there's anything left over from that rinsing, it'll be whatever it is you were going to add in the first place. So that is true. Obviously, we want to wear goggles at all times. Return unused chemicals to the reagent bottles. No, very bad idea. You don't want to, so the reagent bottles are like the big bottles where you get your subs, you know, get your materials, your, your chemicals from. You don't want to put anything unused back because you might be introducing impurities. You might, you know, if you put your hydrochloric acid, acid into a beaker and that beaker is dirty, well, then you're going to be putting dirt or whatever impurities back into the reagent bottle. And you want to have your reagent bottle as pure as possible. You don't want to have other stuff potentially mixed in there. So that's a bad idea. So D looks like it's going to be your answer. And then E is true. If you're going to dilute any acid, but especially sulfuric acid, you want to pour the acid into water, not water into acid. So we get rid of E. And so we get choice D. Which of these does not have a noble gas configuration? So we go to our table and we would see, well, where are our, um, where are these elements normally? And if I made these changes, if I added or removed electrons, what would you have uh, in terms of their configuration? So oxygen is normally, get my periodic table here. Oxygen is normally 1s2, 2s2, 2s2, 2p4. So we can just kind of write its, we'll just write its valence shell. It's 2s2, 2p4, add two electrons to make it minus two you'll get 2s2, 2p6, which is a noble gas configuration. Sodium is a 3s1 valence shell configuration, which if you remove an electron to make it positive becomes 2s2, 2p6, the same thing. Same thing with um, calcium. Calcium is 4s2. So if you remove its two electrons, it will become isoelectronic with argon. So we'll have a noble gas configuration. Now, manganese plus two, yes, you're going to be removing the two, um, you're going to be removing the two four S electrons, but you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, three D five electrons that are not part of the noble gas configuration. Normally, noble gas configuration either has a filled D shell or a completely unfilled D shell. It's not going to have a half filled D shell as manganese will. So manganese will not be isoelectronic with any noble gas. So we can get rid of, we can keep D. And E, iodine, if you add an electron, it will become isoelectronic with xenon. So these all are noble gas configurations except for D.